Our next talk, going to uh, do some neuroimaging now. So um, M uh, Meng Li from uh, Jena University Hospital in Germany is going to talk to us about 7T structure and spectroscopy. MRI. Thank you. Uh, does anyone, everyone hear me well? No? Not. How about now? Good. Uh, slides? Good. Okay. Uh, thanks for having me here. It's a great, wonderful experience. Uh, today I would like to introduce a work from our lab in the past three years. Uh, the, point, the topic is to the what and when of the by physical network response to ketamine. Uh, next slide. Okay. Uh, the no conflict of in interest. Um, after, uh, first, uh, as we all know, the uh, physiologically impaired state dynamics in patients with depression, it has been uh, described as uh, being stuck in the rat, in the rat for, um, uh, by Heltzheimer and Mayberg earlier, and uh, based on Tirati and a serious study after, uh, at, uh, uh, on ketamine, uh, our team, has, our group has uh, proposed uh, the biophysical model of action by ketamine in, to understand uh, ketamine's effect in 2014. And uh, within this framework, we suggest that ketamine may first acutely deepen the symptoms by disrupt uh, the established uh, network uh, configurations and then open a transient uh, window, a uh, plasticity window, and, to, and set the stage for the clinical sustained uh, remissions. And therefore, regarding to this, and then we focus on what it could be the plasticity markers. And if we at multiple key time points, and here uh, we choose the functional connectivity, and then the second is glutamatergic concentration or transmission. The third one is we choose the BDNF, uh, BDNF and uh, as as to later uh, tubulin, and for the from the blood samples, and you uh, we investigate uh, this uh, change at uh, several K time points, including during infusion, one hour past, uh, post after infusion, and twenty four hours after infusion. And uh, in this talk, we have two studies. Uh, the first is uh, placebo controlled uh, cross sectional design, and they have 80 healthy controls. Uh, it's a classical uh, resin ketamine and dosage. It's a scan, there is a 70 scanner, uh, including uh, the baseline and uh, one hour post and 24 hours, including. Uh, uh, yeah, MRS, FMI, and uh, and blood uh, samples. And the second study I would like to say is the uh, the second study is a uh, is uh, quite similar as the first one. The difference is, is here is a over a crossover design, and they have thirty five healthy healthy male controls only. And then this time it's a S ketamine, uh, and it's also seventy uh, seventy scanner. Uh, then the major difference is that this time we, we choose to scan during ketamine infusion rather than one hour after post infusion. And first, let's check the functional connectivity change um, of ketamine. And the hypothesis is uh, in the oh, we we know the Charlene and uh, also reviewed by Casa in 2015. They suggested ketamine uh, depression is characterized by the hyperconnectivity within DMN and also the functional connectivity between the deformal network to central executive network. And therefore, we thought, uh, we hypothesized that ketamine is able to normalize this hyperconnectivity. Um, first, uh, we, we focus on the two uh, uh, key nodes, uh, hub regions of default mode uh, network, the PCC and the prefrontal cortex, a PFC. And here we did see the observed the reduced functional connectivity, reduced the functional connectivity within DMN from dorsal P2 
PCC to DMPFC 24 hours after infusion. This study is consistent with a previous study by Schrodinger in 2012. And at the same, which uh, this is comes from the racemic data, the, the, the previous slides, and the current slides is from our uh, the uh, S-ketamine study. And here we also see the reduced functional connectivity from PGACC to I to inferior peritoneal lobe and also to dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex 24 hours after infusion. Um, Um, with this S-ketamine study, we, in, we are able to observe the, the uh, transient change during ketamine infusion. And this time we found, if take the PGACC as a seed, we observed the increased functional connectivity from this PGACC to medial prefrontal cortex and also medial prefrontal cortex. We thought this is a replicate of the acute synaptic plasticity which has been observed uh, in the preclinical study acutely. Uh, the second uh, sec uh, plasticity marker is the glutamatergic concentration or transmission, neurotransmission. And we know the, the glutamatergic hypothesis on depression, and uh, uh, our, our group reported the decreased glutamine correlated with the anhedonia. Uh, in patients with depression earlier, and uh, Roland in 2015 report, reported the increased glutamine after ketamine. And based on that, we're trying to investigate the uh, glutam glutamatergic changes in two subdivisions of ACC, uh, anterior singular cortex. And here it has been uh, well studied by uh, Palomera. Uh, uh, she suggested the different uh, new, uh, neurotransmitter uh, density uh, in these two subdivisions in pregeneral uh, ACC and dorsal ACC. And especially the pregeneral ACC have the highest uh, AMPA receptor density within uh, ACC subdivisions. Therefore, that's why we focus these two regions. And here we, we did uh, observe the increased New glutamate, glutamine relative to glutamate ratio uh, 24 hours after infusion. Compared to PJCC, there's no similar change in this dorsal ACC. And interestingly, uh, this uh, increased uh, uh, glutamatergic neurotransmission correlated with the reduced functional connectivity within DMN. And the third uh, plasticity marker is the uh, peripheral plasticity markers. Here we choose we we the hypothesis we would like to observe the to in investigate is there any correlations between the peripheral and the central plasticity markers. Here we choose BDNF and the estropelin uh, protein concentrations. Uh, uh, here at 24 hour post infusion, we we observed the increased estrobilin relatively to uh, transferrin uh, ratios in patient in, in in ketamine group, and this increasement is correlated with the decreased glutamate uh, in ketamine group. Uh, secondly, we also increased uh, we also observed the increased uh, BDNF levels in ketamine group. And here the map is a little bit misleading, uh, but it's a natural log transfer uh, conversion of the data. Uh, yeah. And this increased uh, BDNF level is, is also correlated with, is correlated with the reduced functional connectivity uh, in the same group at the same time point. And uh, here is a summary of our findings with this racemic ketamine. So 24 hours after infusion, we found this increased glutamate transmission, neurotransmission, and we observed the reduced functional connectivity between... Uh, okay. 
Uh, yeah. First, we observed uh, this reduced uh, functional connectivity. We observed the increased glutamatergic neurotransmission, and both of them, uh, two of the, these two are correlated with each other, and uh, each of them correlated to uh, one peripheral plasticity markers differently here. Um, then there's a, with our S ketamine study, we also explored the neural correlations uh, of uh, ego dissolution. Um, we focus on the pleasant and unpleasant dissociative symptoms here first. Uh, with this, with a, but first before we uh, then well, first we need to select a. Uh, Starting region and recent uh, in the in past years and there's a hypothesis mentioned uh, suggested the posterior medial cortical regions is uh, play an important role for the ego the psychedelic uh, induced uh, dissociation. Um, yeah, with th therefore we decided to choose this uh, PMC region as a seed to explore its functional connectivity profile, trying to fitting the observed uh, pleasant and unpleasant dissociative symptoms, and which were represented by ocean oceanic boundaries and uh, anxious ego dissolution resp respectively. With the lasso regression, we found this oceanic boundaries uh, uh, score is correlated with the PMC functional connectivity profile during ketamine infusion, and is majorly the feature located within the this PMC region itself. And the th going deeper and focusing on this main dissociative symptoms for pleasant and unpleasant experience. And there are two uh, core symptom uh, skills called experience of unity and disembodiment. We are wondering whether uh, this skills could be explained by the structural uh, matrix of a PMC. And here we surprisingly found uh, that this embodiment can be explained by the cortic thickness uh, of a PMC rather than the experience of unity. Okay. Um, yeah. Here's a summary. We investigate. Uh, the markers to reflect the neuroplasticity during the biophysical model of action and their correlations uh, across time and across modal modality. Um, if uh, a patient with depression is stuck in the rut and we wish the, uh, we hope the ketamine is one, led one of the letters to get, get uh, to help them get rid of the rat, and we explored all this this possible markers, and we hope we we hope uh, these markers could be validated and applied applied in the community. Yeah, and uh, I'm grateful to work with my great colleagues for these exciting studies. And especially, I want to thank Professor Martin Water and uh, Du Gu Chen and uh, uh, Leila College and my uh, collaborators in Magdeburg University. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Uh, can you go back a little bit for the, why you call it seizure in the, pro, the prefrontal medial cortex uh, re correlates with oceanic boundaries, lessness, why you call it seizure exactly? A little bit. Ah, oh, I oh, think wait. it's um, back one. No, so. Yeah, this one. Why you call it on set of seizures? You there, there's a, okay. There was one special. Uh, there is has one special patient here, 
uh, was identi- reported by Stanford uh, two, several years ago um, by Pavitz group. And then the, in order to detect where the source of the seizure and then put uh, electrodes in the brain in region by in, in some regions, and they, they, try, they stimulate electrodes and trying to identify the, which region they explain, the, they can introduce this uh, dissociations and then they identify, they reported this region is expl- responding for the altered sense of self. Yeah. If you activate them, then you feel this sense of, of self. Based on the patient's reported symptoms. Yeah. Thank you. I would exchange hyperconnectivity that we listen during these three days for seizures. I think it's the same phenomena with different names. So that's why I was interested. Thank you. Sorry, I was um, also asking you to go back on a slide to the glutamate and anhedonia slide. I think it was a few couple of slides before. Yeah, I know that. Um, okay. okay so it was something to do with yeah, it, yeah, yeah. That, that that's the one. Yeah, exactly. Um, so c- could you explain why this might be the case? Why why glutamate and glutamine have this effect on anhedonia? <laughs> it's thank you. It's related to the glutamatergic hypothesis uh, in depression. Um, it's related to some work twenty years ago in the post mortem studies. They they observed the uh, excess uh, or higher uh, glutamate in some regions, especially in ACC and PFC. Um, at, but at that time, um, it's a uh, so majority of the studies reported glutamate or GLX. GLX is equal to glutamate plus glutamine. Um, and there's not a very much studies on glutamine 20 years ago because of the technical limitations. And it's just uh, getting... Um, I, our team uh, in 2000, 2009... They started the first uh, spectrum editing study and they focused on the PGACC. And interestingly, they found this decreased uh, glutamine and correlated with anhedonia. This is, it's, I, I, I agree there's some controversial about this glutamatergic findings because, it's, uh, because this is not that easy to acquire the data. So it's better to investigate in 7T anyway. Um, this, therefore, I say increase or change in glutamate because it's still <laughs> controversial. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. It's a heroic study. The, uh, there's been quite a bit of speculation that the early glutamate surge might be related to changes later mechanistically. I didn't. Sorry if I missed it, but I was just wondering if those early changes you saw during the ketamine infusion were related to any of the connectivity changes you saw 24 hours afterwards? Mm, that's an interesting question. Uh, to be honest, uh, the originally we were starting this project based on some preclinical study, especially Milaka study, and he invested in glutamate, glutamine change uh, after infusion and also earlier PCP studies. Um, therefore, that's why in these two studies, we investigated the glutamate, glutamine changes uh, one hour before, one hour after infusion. And the second study, we even scanned this during uh, the infusion because we're wondering, we, we scanned that one hour after, is it too late to, uh, to catch the surge? of the glutamate change because we from the other study we realized this glutamate change have uh, it's changed quite fast and then it's a return back and this is really uh, time dependent um they have, unfortunately we thought it should be changed for first in a region with the highest uh, nmd receptor density that is a uh, dacc but we did not see any change in this significant change in this region in both studies. 
that's it. Yeah, that, that's this thing. And then we do see some change at 24 hours in two studies. Yeah, it's more consistent. Okay, that's great. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah. I think that's all we've got time for. So thank you very much again. Great talk. <laughs>